Joy Prime, the ultimate experience. And a very good morning to everyone of you watching us on Joy Prime Television and also on Joy 99.7 FM. This is Home Affairs. My name is Adam Knight T. How are you doing this morning? As you can see, I am glowing and I am fine. I do hope that you are doing very well too. <laughs> this morning, I came across this and I thought I should share it with you. Don't forget that you're human. You are only human. So it's okay to have a meltdown every once in a while. What's not okay though, is you, you know, unpacking and decided, deciding to live there. It's okay that every once in a while, you have a meltdown. What's not okay is deciding that that place becomes the place where you will settle. Cry it out and then refocus on where you are headed. It's very important. When you get to that point, yes, relax. Take all the time you need to cry it out, um, to go through the emotions and all. But remember that you can't stay there. When you stay there, that's where you become a loser. So cry. <laughs> Um, they say it's in cheese and we we suck a crown with him then you wipe your face and then you get up and you get going if you need help to get up seek for help and get up but by all means don't stay there that's what not okay in a bit i will tell you you know give you more details about what our sponsors are up to and how you can get in touch with them our show begins now last week we started a conversation and we simply are saying it's time with the obstetrician gynecologist and we are hanging out again with Dr. Paddy Ayete of Elimas Health, right? Yes, indeed. He's the organ at the top at Elimas Health. And it's always exciting to have Dr. Ayete. Uh, by the time you're done listening to him, even for 20, 30 minutes, you'll feel like you know, you're on top of issues and that's if you're paying attention. And most importantly, you will take steps to be able to get your health on track. If you realize that by the questions, you know, you, we may not be able to answer your question, but someone's question could be similar to yours. So you pick up the answers and you want to work on it. So today too, we're going through, we have questions from last week. We'll start with them and then continue to take your questions on 055 zero five five eleven eleven nine 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 seven and hopefully we are able to activate the phone line sometime within the show on zero three zero two two one six five four one but right now you can send your questions through number again zero five five one 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 nine nine seven we're live on facebook we're live on youtube we've got your, our tweets going on and the handle is at joy 997 I will also remind you of the rest of the programs we have coming up within the day so that you will be able to stay tuned and, you know, live here on Joy. Doc, good morning. You're good morning. welcome. Thank you very much. Good to have you again. It's my pleasure to be here. Great. Sometimes I, I, I wish that some of the conversations we have off air, we can have them on <laughs> air. <laughs> But that's okay. Um, so we go <coughs> on to our first questions. You ready? Can we go? Good to go. Great. So our first question says, good morning. Please ask Doc, can candidiasis come back again after treatment in two weeks? Yes, it can. Uh, that answer, me, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it can. Um, it could either be um, that the treatment that was given was inadequate. Okay. So the infection has maybe gone down a little bit and then grown up again. It could also be a new infection. So if the place you went and got the first one... <laughs> uh, the place has not been treated. You went back there again. And the place can, has a problem. You can go and get a new a new, a new, new one. So it's not... It, it, it is possible. Yeah, and, and how about if you abandon treatment? You oh, don't it's finish it's the treatment. problem with abandoning treatment is... So, you know, we give you the medication takes for seven weeks. Or mm -hmm. seven days, sorry. Mm -hmm. And you take it to three mm -hmm. and you stop. So what happens is that the infection goes down and then you stop taking it. Some will die, but the other ones who didn't die mm -hmm. now come and say, oh, we know you now. We know this medicine. Those ones that are able to survive that medicine are the ones that will grow again. And become more stubborn. And become more stubborn. Mm -hmm. Because when you use the same medicine again, they're like, oh, no, no, no. This medicine doesn't work. 
they're used to it. That, that is when they tell you, Paul, I know. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The other ones, I know, but you says I know, but you, I don't know you. <laughs> so, yes, um, he's giving you the three instances that um, and the last one, I mean, it seems like a very strong one. That is, if you are binding treatment and, you know, those who don't die, they will come back sometimes <laughs> even stronger. Course. And then Doc also talked about the fact that maybe um, you go back to go and contract it within that same period so it can recur. And the third one, um, if the, the treatment wasn't adequate. Good, yeah. Okay. So, yes, two weeks treating candidiasis and it's coming back very 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 likely and um doc yes okay so this thing about candidiasis does it also come with a smell typically candidiasis shouldn't come with the smell okay but it can combine with another infection there's another infection that walks right beside it mm. and that infection comes with the smell. the smell so once you come and it's a specific unique <laughs> smell <laughs> Oh, Lord. Oh, and dog, it's okay. <laughs> I did it too, yeah. So once you have that kind of a smell down there, please. Uh, the treatment is simple. Actually, there are just two tablets. You can take it. It would go away. Uh, before, we thought, t- we thought it was purely a bacterial infection, and it was not transmitted. It was not transmissible. Now we believe it is transmissible. So oh, the other one. Yes, the other one. So it is possible to what, get... What is it called? Wh- which one? The other one you're talking about. <laughs> that doesn't make a difference. Your doctor is supposed to figure it out for you. We don't want you going to the pharmacy and say, I want this one. Doctor <gasps> says this is what... Oh, no, no. Like I wasn't actually asking about the <laughs> tree. I wanted the name of the condition. Yeah. Okay, so the, 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 the condition that comes with the smell is yeah. called a bacterial vaginosis. Ah, okay. And and it's it's we believe it's caused by some particular organisms. Right. But the important thing that is characteristic about it is that it's got a unique kind of smell. So if a client comes and tells you I have a smell, you d- say describe it. The woman she uses one word, you kind of know in what direction you are going. Me cry, know that <laughs> one too. <laughs> now, um, still on candidiasis, right? Now, if you have, or if I mean, you have a, a woman has a vaginal discharge, mm. this um, whitish, you mm. know, discharge, and it is, it's not probably itchy, mm. it doesn't smell, or but it's regular. Is it cause for concern? It may not be. Okay. Because the vagina has some fluid inside. Mm. It is not a dry place. Mm. What is concerning is that fluid is enough to be flowing out. Oh. See, the fluid is flowing out, then we are concerned that something is not, is not right. right. But if you put a speculum inside and open and you look into ev- every vagina, you would see a small amount of fluid there, and you see a small amount of whitish um fluid let's put it that way okay a small amount so i asked all your questions for you y- you know your s- <laughs> you know yourself good morning Adam. my wife had btl after our third child after that it took a year eight months before she started having her menstruation thereafter every menstrual period is accompanied with very severe headaches which has persisted till date this is from eight months it has it has been three years since she had the BTL, and this is Kojo very worried about his wife. I'm not sure it it's came from BTL the BTL. That's giving her, that the giving her the headaches. I think it's something that she needs to uh, be assessed for. Some people have this problem without having a BTL, mm. so it's not necessarily a BTL, BTL that, 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 that caused it. it. So it's important that she sees a doctor for him to assess a proper and try and find out why she's having um, the the headaches that she's that she's having around the time of her menses. So for the sake of people who don't know BTL? Bilateral tubal ligation. It's a process where when you, at delivery or after delivery, uh, we tie your tubes. The tie your tubes is a very simple process. Like you take a piece of thread, you make, a, you make a loop, you tie around it, and you cut the loop that is on top of it. So that the objective is the sperm does not meet the egg. That's all it does. So it's a birth control. It's a birth control method. Yeah. It's a permanent birth control method, essentially irreversible. So you shouldn't regard that. Oh, I'll go and turn it back again. Mm-mm. It's essentially. It's not impossible to reverse. It's just the results are not very good, and oh. so we don't encourage. If you're going to do it, be sure that it is the last thing you want to. You're, you've had your last child, and you are done. I don't want to start that advocacy, but if you ask me, right. A woman will carry pregnancy with all the issues that come with it, one, two, three, sometimes four, and then when she's done, she has to go and do this. You people should go and do a vasectomy. 
No, nothing. <laughs> vasectomy is. It, I, I think we need more people having the skill to do vasectomy. Is it the skill or the men? No, I the, mean, first I know of all, a couple if, of if men. you want a vasectomy, yeah. you have to ask around before you find a place for, for, for somebody that is. We don't have as Bro, many options how available. How many men have you have you heard asking around? Oh, for I, I know people who have had vasectomies. I've known people who have had no, vasectomies. No, I mean the shopping around, asking yes, around. Like have, women yeah. would want to do um, other things. Oh, a lot of, of men have, have called. Shall I want a vasectomy? Where do I go? And so see this person, he'll do it for you. Hey, do a Yeah. Uh, oh, the sometimes it's the women who are telling them, Master, don't go and do it. Maybe it's the ones, that, affect the ones that I talk to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Ajima, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's the day he tries that thing. Yeah. That will be the day the witches in his village will kill his children. <laughs> <laughs> good yeah. morning, and um, I have two fibroids. Um, I have had, is it that I have two fibroid operations? Okay, so she has had two fibroid operations already. It has come back again with the largest being 4 cm in size. I don't want to go through the pains again. So what should I do? 47, and she has no children. I'm assuming that by the pains, she's talking about the pains of surgery. Okay. Yeah, well, because she hasn't said that the, the fibroids. Yeah, I, pain. I think this one, you are the we doctor. Shall, we so shall assume. Maybe you should handle both assume pains. Assume it's the pain of the surgery. Um, at 40, okay, the um, research in this country has shown that the average age of menopause is 48. Okay. Amongst Ghanaian women. Um, um, but some people go further f in ah, into their ah, 50s. Ah. Generally, once you hit menopause, the fibroids shrink in size and are no longer a challenge. So if the fibroids are not causing a problem and she's willing to wait it out, then she can leave it alone. she hit menopause soon. Fibroids decrease in size and don't cause any more issues and that'll be the end. She wouldn't need any significant intervention. On the other hand, if the fibroids are causing trouble, then we may have to consider doing something about it. In doing something about it, there are options. Option one, there are medications that you can be given that would stop the growth of the fibroid, shrink the fibroid until you hit menopause and then you don't need to take the medication anymore. Option two, you can have what you call, what we normally call open surgery, which I don't think is the one that she wants to have because of the amount of um, pain that comes from it. Option three, depending on the fibroid's location, you can have a keyhole surgery. No matter the size? Four centimeters is possible. Okay. For her size, it's possible. But it depends on the location, how deep it is inside the, inside the mm -hmm. muscle. Mm -hmm. But you can do a keyhole surgery where you put, we make small holes. Um, the largest hole would be about, in her case, um, ten, 10 millimeters, that's one centimeter. Okay. F four or five holes on her tummy and go inside, remove the fibroid through those small holes, chop it up into small pieces, and get out of the tummy. The pain you have is like a day's pain. You chop it out where? Inside the... Yes, it's a machine you use to chew it up, put it inside the bag, and then chew it up. So, the, so like the fibroid is four centimeters, and you are bringing it out of a one centimeter hole. hole. So there are ways you can cut it up and bring it out in small pieces. Yes, so that surgery is available in this country. So if she let wants me, to uh, remove let it, me, it can let be Let me ask what's on my mind mm. around this. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, don't laugh. So, what is inside the fibroid? A combination. This okay. A little bit of muscle uh, tissue, uh -huh. but a lot of. Um, Does it have fluids in it? No, no, no. It doesn't have. Fluids. No, no, no. It's hard. It's hard. Okay. A, a lot of fibrous tissue. That's okay, actually it's okay. Quality if it fibrous. doesn't have fluids, then my question is invalid. If the fibroid undergoes degeneration. In other words, rotting. Mm. The middle can rot, for lack of a better word. And that's because when something rots, fluid comes inside. You may have some small fluid in the middle of it. <sighs> but it's usually hard, like a tennis ball. Because I was going to ask, of course, I am not a doctor. I try. <laughs> right? I was going to ask that, okay, if you are chopping it inside and mm. it has fluids in mm. it, um, isn't it possible that these fluids can leak into your body and have okay. issues? Okay, good question. Actually, it's a very good question. Um, there's something, there's a bag. So when you are getting to that stage, yeah. you would introduce a bag into the tummy, pick the fibroid and put it into the bag, and then chop it up in the bag. Oh. So anything that comes out will be in the in bag. Be in the bag. It's also to prevent spread of any, you know, in case there's something in a fibroid that will cause trouble, it prevents spread. Lord have mercy. So we've thought of that one. We thought of you <laughs> when we created that one. <laughs> I'm sorry, it was a very valid question. It was. Now, I want to ask, Still two questions related to fibroid. Now, once you bring the questions up, I, I do my follow-up questions. 
Um, you talked about the fact that um, if the fibroids are not causing troubles, mm. what troubles do fibroids cause? Or what are some of the troubles? Mass effect, it makes your tummy big. big. So there's a mass that is, you know, making your tummy look big, creates mm. a bulge in the lower tummy. It can press onto the bladder. If it presses onto the bladder, it can cause urine problems. It can press onto the ureter. So it causes flow from the kidney, um, it's blocked, urine can accumulate, the kidneys can become dilated, and then it can cause, end up causing problems in the um, other, you know, kidney function is uh, affected. So long-term basis, that is not a good thing for you to, for it to happen to wow. you. It can press onto the rectum, which can cause you to have constipation because now the tube that the feces should pass through is now narrowed because of the mass of the fibroid and feces gets stuck above it and that also comes with its own issues. Its own issues. So the mass, it, I mean, basically it's causing trouble front, back, side, side, just oh by dear. its presence. Then it can be in the middle of the muscle where it may not cause any problem for you to notice, but then you would have problems with um, um, when you, if you get pregnant, for instance, blood supply to the fibroid is affected and therefore it causes significant pain. Or then if it's where the baby is supposed to lie, that's the inner part of the uterus, um, it causes bleeding problems. I see. And it can cause significant bleeding problems. problems. Um, ble the periods can be long, periods can be heavy. You can basically bleed all your blood out oh dear. If, it's not, if it's not controlled in time. And the periods... Um, and then sometimes even after the period has ended, the surface is a bit raw, so it causes a discharge. So it can cause a, a continuous yellowish discharge that is not stopping because of the raw surface on top of the, f of, of the fibroid. Okay, I, I get it. So if you're going through any of these, then it means that it's causing problems and it must that be attended it to. to. But some fibroids do cause no problems at, at all. all. They are just lying there minding their business. business. Mm. <laughs> but it's still not their space, right? No, they're not supposed to be there. But Great. Um, now, the other question that I want to ask for this woman, because she mentioned that she doesn't have kids, mm -hmm. uh, just in case she is still thinking at 47 mm -hmm. of having children, mm -hmm. how possible is that? It is possible to have a child at 47. Because she, no, she has had two fibroids. It depends on the already. location of the fibroid. Okay. If the fibroid is in the inner part, what you call the submucous fibroid, the type that causes the, the bleeding, mm. that fibroid, because of where it's located, causes... Uh, like a family planning effect on the woman. Oh. So you have a tenant, you have a room. It's supposed to be an empty room waiting for a tenant to come and occupy. And then somebody comes, a squatter comes and sits in the room. Mm. When a tenant comes, he can't occupy the room because somebody's already in the room. So when the baby comes, he meets the fibroid there. The fibroid tells me, I'm here. And I'm part of the wall. I'm like, not going anywhere. On, let's cohabit. You can't cohabit with me. <laughs> so a few people, I've got a client right now who has a big fibroid and a baby all inside that space there. And they're all thriving. Uh, interesting times ahead. Yeah. But for quite a number of people, it causes the mass effect. And then um, it causes you to have, um, um, it makes it, fertility becomes an, an, an issue. But with that, the good thing about that kind of fibroid with, with the inner part is that we, there's a technique by which we go through the vagina, we go through the cervix, we enter the womb, and we remove that fibroid, and we come out that way without cutting you. I see. And you go home the same day. And then you can have your babies. And then you can have your babies. Okay. You should come and watch one one day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it would be interesting. Yeah, you should come and watch one one day. It would be interesting. Let's talk about that. I'd like to. I am almost 60 and still have hot flashes and sweat profusely. Is it still menopausal or could it be something else? Uh, we don't know when her menopause started. Okay. That's, that, that's the problem with this thing. Um, if, sh if she's one of those who had a very late uh, menopause, menopause, she could still be going through the... the How long is it supposed to last? Depends on, it depends on the individual. Before you become normal again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say maybe two to three years. Hey. But it depends on the individual. Some of us are not there, but we are asking for ourselves. Yeah, we have to. <laughs> but one of these days, we'll have the menopause talk. Huh? Oh, yeah, we should. Yeah, full we talk. We should. Full talk on menopause. menopause. I mean, I think we should. I mean, why should we delay? Let's see how no, today no. goes. Today, we've got plenty of questions. Yes, we'll not today. For not, what, what, we'll plan for menopause. I went to a funeral and met a, a gentleman who says, Funny, I said yes. Charlie, the menopause, if we talk about her more, oh, the dear. things my wife they do. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I said, Yeah, we need to talk about menopause. You know, I, these days. I, I was telling you when uh, my, my first daughter first had him, like the menarchy. Then, so I, I had some education with her. She said, Can I just get this thing done and over with? I said, like how? It should just end so that I'll be free. I said, madam, <laughs> this is until you are about 50 years. Mm. She said, 
there goes my life. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very tender age. So yeah. yes, <laughs> when you are young and it's just coming, it comes with all the agitation. It, and then when you are approaching that, you start, we should have the menopause conversation in full. Adam, I am 51. I've had three children through CS. For the past two to three years, I have been having excruciating waist pains. Is it because of the CS? And what do I do for the pains? Um, I don't know what, what time her last child, what, how old her last child was to see if there's any near relationship with it. But most of the time, I would say no. Okay. Um, when people have had surgeries, family planning, um, you know, those kinds of things, they always attribute anything that happens to them. Even if they have a car accident, they say it's because of the family planning or the surgery that they've done. Um, she, I'll just give you an example. She may be somebody who does a work, a job that requires heavy lifting. And she's been lifting things in the wrong manner. She may be sitting down very poorly on a regular basis in the office that she, she, she works in. Or her office is not kind enough to get them good economic chairs for them to sit on and protect their back. The result is that you have had, you have the back problems because of a lifetime of poor sitting or poor lifting habits or poor mattresses that you've had all your life. Unfortunately, the CS that everybody attributes it to. I think she needs to see a clinician for them to access, yeah. as, assess her properly. Exactly. On the waste paid, its costs, and, and then based on that, proper hair solution. Is there any chance at all after she probably goes for um, uh, for review in the hospital mm. and all that it could be related to the CS somehow? We do a scissor section in front. So we cut your it tummy. You're having a problem with, with your way. back. Especially if this is somebody who has had general anesthesia for all her procedures. We can't even attribute it to the spinal. So I wouldn't go there. She needs to be assessed. Is it possible that, Doc, you know that when you're pregnant, you have some waist pains, mm -hmm. right? Um, after delivery, mm -hmm. I mean, could it be that that pain can have a permanent effect on you? If she has repeated heavy babies, okay? Mm. Uh, but when you have pregnancy, when you're pregnant with a heavy baby, the, it pulls your spine forward. You understand? When I was pregnant with a twist, yeah. I suffered with mm. <laughs> It pulls your spine <laughs> forward and really distorts your, your, your balance. I know, right? And if and your alignment. If afterwards um, you you maybe have another baby that's also you know big like that, then we, we continue to persistently misalign your spine. Mm. So after you've delivered, that misalignment may not necessarily come back. It oh. may actually remain that way. And that is why you go and see those nice people who, the chiropractor people who would realign your spine. I actually think that this is a very important question mm -hmm. I asked. Mm -hmm. You know why? So that um, after two or three births, especially mm -hmm. so if they were heavy, mm -hmm. and you had the pains, and you you thought about it, and you went to see um, how do you call them? A chiropractor mm -hmm. or a physiotherapist, a therapist, mm -hmm. and they checked it for you. They probably could start your alignment early, yeah. other than leaving it you for know, a long time, for a very yeah. long time. Ah. So if your back is I hurting should have you, known. Mm. I should have known. <laughs> but I have asked for you, so take note of that. You have your babies, when you have waist pains and they are quite persistent, you should go and check. Just say, maybe, you know, yeah, when you are, you fulfill your, your tummy is that way, you're always, <laughs> oh God. I, my, my son turned um, 12 two days ago, nice. my last one. Nice. So you should know. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember how pregnancy nice. feels like. <laughs> I don't want to go there again. <laughs> done, done, done. Done, did, did, done, and done that. <laughs> I've had irregular verses since March. Uh, it delayed for a week, but came normal later. For the month of April, I had menstrual pains like I always do when, the menstru um, when menstruating, but only saw some brownish spotting or bleeding when I clean after urinating for a day or two. Just yesterday, the same brownish bleeding which sold my underwears. Um, but this morning, nothing at all. I visited my gynae and he asked that I do an egg test and that I might not be producing eggs. Yeah, she may not be producing eggs, okay. but I think they are on the right path. Once they do the assessment, they'll figure out what, what the, problem the problems is. are. When it comes to menstrual issues, there, are, there could be so many reasons. Mm. So many reasons. One of the commonest issues we have are people who just have irregular menses. The, some people have, don't have menses at all. They have for several months before it comes. 
some people just have very, very small um, menstrual flow. Um, some people have no menses for a long time, then they have a very long menses for mm. one month. All of these are issues that can be, can be fixed. They are not normal. Yeah. They are not normal. Um, so if you have those kinds of things, we should be able to see your gynecologist to try and especially those that they tell you that you've got PCOS. It's a very common condition. Yeah, polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's a very common condition. Uh, it starts when you're very young, um, but it generally comes with menstrual um, issues. Mm, menstrual disorders. disorders. And so if, if the doctor, if you do a scan and they tell you you've got polycystic ovaries, um, thankfully now, unlike before, there are good treatments for them. PCOS now is significantly manageable. Old, young, whatever it is. And it also comes with, you know, they come with pimples, oil, oh, oily yeah. face, hair on their chin, all those kinds of stuff. It can be managed. Okay. You can manage. There's medication for it available today. Thank God. Uh, in the olden days, we needed to do surgeries and things. We don't need to do that anymore. We can actually be provide medication over a period of time. You would notice an improvement, and then you get a whole lot better. And for those who are not ovulating because of PCOS, once you take the medication consistently, you will ovulate. Hmm. You know, at this point, I just want to say that if you wake up every day and you're healthy, and you don't have some of these issues. You, you shouldn't take it for granted and think that it is something you're doing right. I think you should just be grateful to God because people deal with so much. Last week, on, no, was it last week? Yeah, on Strong and Sassy, um, anyone hosted this young woman, I think, who is dealing with endometriosis. And when she was telling mm. her story, mm. oh God. There's, med there's medication for that too. There is, yeah. Eh? Your heart will sink, you know, um, the things she has had to deal with. Some for, 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 for some people too, some of us too, right, mm. uh, back in the day, when you miss your period mm. for a day, mm. you know you are pregnant <laughs> <laughs> because it is so regular, it's not funny. Yeah. <laughs> you miss it a day, you know that, oh, that is it. So um, let's, not take, let's not take good health for granted. We, we should be grateful to God. And I hope that these conversations we hap we're having, um, you're taking notes and asking further questions and seeing your doctor. Sometimes I you read some of the questions and you're wondering you want to ask have you spoken to a doctor yet because it is seeming as though we have the challenges and we are you know uh, we're, we're living with them and not asking questions around them until such a time so please if you find out that something is quite abnormal in your body please ask questions or sometimes you can just do regular medical checks doc mm, yes yeah regular checks and then um, they always tell us that if it is picked up early, then it can be treated early. So regular checks to know what's happening with you is really very important. <coughs> My next question here says that, Doc and Adam, I am 45 with three children, practiced um, family planning for five years and stopped about two years ago. I have not menstruated since I stopped, but it came last two months for a day and stopped again. Please, I am experience, Am I experiencing premenopausal symptoms? And this is from Vivian. Um, it is possible, but it's also possible. She didn't mention the family planning. The type. The type. But it's also possible that it could be related to the family planning method that she was she was on. Doc, what is family planning? Why mm. are they so complicated? They're not complicated. Ah. I, I don't want to get pregnant, so mm. I take something mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. I want to get pregnant. I stopped taking that thing. My body should go back to normal. Now. Yes, but it depends on the method. And that's the, the challenge, is that we should let you know, and that one, it's on S. Okay. We should let you know that this method I'm giving you, you know, your body will get come back to normal in one year. So when we are doing the method, we plan to stop it one year before you need it. You need you want to get pregnant. There's another one. We'll give it to you. We'll tell you. This one, in six months' time, you'll be spotting small, small, small every day. It will happen. When it happens, come and see me. I will fix it. You understand? So the day you, ca you wake up and instead of your menses coming, it now comes every day, tr 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 and then you're like, hey, it's not stopping, and it's coming small, small, and my husband is complaining. Remember that we told you when it happens, come back, we'll fix it. It will stop after a while. So we, you, we can sort it out. Once you know that these are the things to expect, then it's not a problem anymore. <laughs> the challenge is that either we, didn't, we don't tell you, or when we tell you, you forget everything that we tell you. Which happens. So a lot of times I'm like, husband, please listen to what I'm saying here because your wife will ask you when you get home. That's what did he say, even though she was here when I said it. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, they still come back and say, hey, the thing you said today, I don't remember. 
But once they know that these things are to be expected, then when it happens, they just come back and we address it for you. But with the injectable, for instance, for example, it is known that it can stop your period. And it is known that it will take a while for the period to come back. Six months, nine months, maybe a year. No, it's not a problem. Exactly. Once you know that that is how it works, some people, somebody is working about this. She doesn't want the period to come. <laughs> she is struggling with the period. It's causing her pain. It is this, that. When you give her the injection, the period stops. She's happy. You understand? So she will come religiously because, hey, I don't want the period to start again. But in case she decides to have a child, she must stop it early mm. rather than wait till I want to have the child in March. So I stopped the injection in, in February. January. Forget, it's not happening. You, mm. are not, you may not see your period that year. That's all. And by the way, you don't see the period because your body says, I know a pregnancy is not going to come, so I'm not going to lay the bed sheet down to have to remove it at the end of the month. You understand? It's not that there's something wrong with you. You are not sick. Your body just knows that since no pregnancy is coming, don't prepare for it. But once, That's all. anyway, I get what you're saying. But Daniela, please note, so we have two major topics we'll be dealing with. Menopause and family planning. <laughs> we'll be dealing with these two. And then we'll see how the, the calendar method has also worked for some people. And the other one. The other one that doc doesn't advise. Ah, uh, that one. Mm. Uh, it doesn't, it, doesn't mm, it comes with problems. Uh, which are, you don't know what I'm talking yes, about. Yes, yes, it comes with problems. Oh, Doc, are you sure? Oh. The withdrawal method. Oh, withdrawal method. Yes, the withdrawal method comes with problems. However, <laughs> the withdrawal method should only be used by the man who is more afraid of pregnancy than you are. <laughs> If the man is not committed, Charlie, <laughs> oh dear. you forget. <laughs> These issues. This one says, um, okay, so another family planning one. I had family planning, the one inserted under the arm um, in 2019. It was for two years. It expired in December last year, but I have not had my menses normal again. About two months ago, it came continuously for three weeks. And that's it. Currently, it looks like it won't. It wants to come, but the flow is very small. What is the cause, please? And what do I need to do? Uh, we have to. We know it's an implant. Um, there are two types of implants: the one stick, what we have in this country, the one stick and the two stick. The one stick is for three years, and the two sticks is for five years. Um, she didn't stay which one she had, but, but I'm assuming if it expired in December, is it still in her arm? Because if it has expired and it's still in your arm, it's not supposed to be in your arm, please have it removed and if necessary replaced if you don't intend to have any more, more, more children. The issue she's describing may or may not be related to the family planning method. If she still has it in her arm, then even though it has ended, there may still be some chemical inside that is still being um, uh, excreted, uh, secreted, and the excreted, and the result is that she may have um, the pain. The irregular menses may be related to the the the, the family the, the, planning. the planning implant that is still inside there. But the best thing to do, if the date is up, is that it needs to be removed. Mm. She's been told that it will expire by December. Have it removed. And once you have it removed, the thing about the implant is that it releases a small amount of chemical every day. Yes. And that chemical does its work to prevent you from getting pregnant. We need to remove it. But once you remove it, the factory that produces the chemical is no longer in your body. So the chemical's effect is essentially gone. The nice thing about it is that you take it out this month, you can get pregnant next month. Wow. Because it's gone. It's left your system. Unlike the injection that when we give it to you, it stays there for... Uh, we, we need to have a whole conversation on family planning. I remember some years ago when we had um, one such conversation. There was a research document. I've forgotten the country. And, you know, the, the men in that country were saying that they were having stomach problems and all because their wives were on family planning. <laughs> 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 I'll look for it and show it. It's so hilarious. Like, they had severe yeah. headache. They mm. had, you, you remember that? They had stomach problems because their wives were on family planning. But I think that, look, with all these, we will have to have a whole conversation on it. Uh, um, the next question here says, good morning, Eden. Before I turned 60 last year, once in a while, I spot blood. I went to the doctor and was told some stubborn eggs want to be fertilized. And because it's failed, that's the spotting of blood. How true is this? This is from Ifwa Inosu. But, Doc, we will take a very, very, very quick break. When we come back, we will answer this question that's asking of spotting. So stay tuned in. We will be right back. 
Joy Prime, the ultimate experience. Thank you for staying tuned in. This is Home Affairs. We're live on Joy 99.7 FM, also on Joy Prime Television. If you're just joining us, you missed a bit, but there's still more you can learn. We're spending time with the Ops and Gaini, Dr. Paddy Ayete of Elemas Health. Specifically, we're asking questions related to Ops and Gaini. And so you can send your questions through. We still have some time, about, you know, some 20 minutes to go, 55 And we will be activating the phone lines in a bit. Actually, we can activate the phone lines now. So 302 you can actually call and also ask your question. So we asked this one before we took the break. And um, before I turned 60 last year, once in a while, I spotted blood. I went to the doctor and was told some stubborn eggs want to be fertilized. And because it, it feels that's the spotting of blood, how true is this? This is from before. She lives in Osu. Well, no, it is not true. Mm. Secondly, any bleeding after ah, but How can the doctor give uh, false information like that? Hmm, Charlie. Hey. Uh, um, hmm, okay. Wow. Uh, let me just yes. address her issue. Yes. As for the doctor's issue, I don't know what to say. Um, um, any kind of bleeding after menopause is worrisome. Mm. And that is because you mentioned the, last the bleeding can be from the cervix as a cervical cancer or from the uterus as an endometrial cancer, mm. both of which can kill you. Wow. But both of which, if caught early, will save your life. Great. So we don't joke with any kind of bleeding. After menopause. That doesn't mean that's the only cause of bleeding it could be a cervicitis it could be a vaginitis it could be you know there are other kinds of things even ordinary small inflammation can cause bleeding over there so th that is not to say that any bleeding is cancerous. cancerous but any bleeding is potentially a cancer and therefore cancer must be ruled out okay so once you've hit menopause periods have stopped in this woman this woman's case she's 60 that means they've stopped for quite a while oh, quite a bit, and then yeah. you see any kind of bleeding you need to be properly and fully assessed and not to be told that you have it's someone not, eggs no, 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 that no, want to be no, fertilized no, no, i no. see properly and fully assessed because if it's cancerous and you don't do anything about it it spreads and spreads and then eventually you are told that nothing can be done and you die from a condition that could have been prevented oh dear it's unacceptable yeah so please um you need to have you need to let the doctors have a second look at it doc i know we said we're going to deal with um menopause as a subject on its own but i want to find out from you so uh, how long does it take for it to grind to a halt fully that you know that okay now next month it won't come the period yes no it is it, it just it once it and it goes no, off no no no, no. it's okay. a gradual process exactly and you the, the Usually you would notice the menstrual changes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after a while, the menses stops. And then after a while, you notice the, you, you, you may not notice the hot flashes initially. You understand? Then at some point in time, you start noticing that, hey, uh, why am I mean that yeah, averagely, so how many uh, it, it, it depends it on take? the individual. Everybody is different. Uh, so some so people, it takes Some people, I <laughs> 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 don't tell you. <laughs> I won't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you use it as marking scheme. I don't use it as marking. I just want to have an idea. When, when, you, when your own pass is not like, hey, oh, you no, no, trouble. No, no, no. Interview, interview. I won't tell you. you know, the just know that somebody's zone takes long. Somebody's zone think. takes a shorter duration. And and we all differ in that respect. Okay, don't worry. When we are doing menopause, you will not you say you will me, not answer you that question. You pin me down on that one. Because I, I have a lot of questions on my mind. I mean, the question I'm asking you reminds me when I was trying to tell my kids about when they kept asking um how a baby is born how do you how do, then i remember saying hmm, sometimes they were young then you have to cut the woman's stomach mm, and put the baby out. out so for a child when you say that i'm expecting hey mommy but there will be blood mm. no the next question simply was and at other times <laughs> they were expecting <laughs> something else i didn't say so <laughs> You're not telling me what <laughs> I want to hear. <laughs> Good morning, please. I want to ask if there are ch chances of getting pregnant when I have sex few days after my ovulation and taking med medications not recommended for pregnant women. And if there should be pregnancy, will the baby come out normal? This is from Regina. Um, okay, 
So sperm can live for up to five days in the female reproductive tract. So technically, it means you can get pregnant even if you had f- sex five days before, before ovulation. ovulation. So that is one. Now, assuming you take medication that are not particularly good for pregnant women, uh, the time you took the medication, you weren't pregnant mm. from her description because it was during a period before her ovulation period. Yeah. And most medications will leave your system before, you know, because you, you fertilize, then you implant, all that takes, you know, a couple, at least a, a week um, after ovulation. And then the main issue when it comes to medication is within the first 70 days. And that is where if you take the wrong medication, you may have a significant effect on the, on, 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 on on the, the baby. baby yeah. um, however, most of the medications, are t- you are told not to take it, not necessarily because it will cause a problem. It is that because we have not been able to rule out the potential of causing problems. problems. And so we, t- we tell you it is not recommended that, that you take it. But unless it's, there are some medications that they will tell you straight, if you are taking this medication, do not get Too pregnant. pregnant. Mm. Because we know it will cause trouble. If it's not one of those things, most likely you'll be fine. So what should she do now that she's worried? Then she's not yet pregnant. She, I mean, she's saying. She's not pregnant. She could be. When she gets pregnant, she just has to inform the doctor that I took this medication at this time. She would look at a specific medication and give her advice based on the specific what medication she that, she, that, she, that she took. Okay, great. <coughs> Hi, Amanda. Good morning. Good morning, again. How are you? I am well, thank you. Amanda, you seem quite far away from your phone. Um, I'm actually using my head. Okay. Can we, let's hear you, please. Okay. Um, please, um, my son is three years. Um, after the living, I have I discovered I have a very much Amanda, well, please hold on. Hold on. Let me call for assistance um, in our studio. We can hardly hear you. And so, um, Daniela, please, let's, let's have it checked. Um, let me read this message while we check Amanda's. Hello, Adam. Please ask. My wife has had about four miscarriages. Hello, Amanda. Hello, Adam. Yes, it's better now. But kindly move away from your radio set. We're getting feedback. That radio or okay. television, we're getting feedback. Hello? Yes, great. Let's hear you. Okay. Um, I was trying to say to I had to wait to see uh, the way we were. And after the video, I discovered that I had a very good time. So I want to see the best time. I just want to know how I am on that. What you say you want to know? An umbilical hernia is not very alarming. Um, a hernia is usually a defect in the abdominal wall. In this particular case, it could be in other places. And part of your in abdominal contents is protruding mm. through a small defect in the wall. Um, pregnancy tends to stretch the abdomen. If there's a small hole, a small hole can become a bigger hole, and therefore things can protrude through it. Um, it is unless something is stuck inside its main problem is that it doesn't look nice um it can be repaired it's not it, it can be surgically repaired the hole can be closed and the problem would, would go away okay great. so no it's not it's not too much <coughs> of a problem nice um adam i would like the doctor to tell me the difference between iui and ivf uh, i've been trying to get pregnant for the past three years Upon investigations, my husband was told he has low sperm count and, the sp- and that the sperms are not shooting in the right direction. The only options we were given were surgery on my husband to correct the malfunction or IVF. Kindly let me know what you think. That's like three or four different questions. <laughs> IUI is when we take sperm, wash it, clean it, let them run to an obstacle course, choose the best and then suspend it in a new fluid mm-hmm. and put it inside a woman who is just about to ovulate. IVF is that we still go and take the sperm like that, but in addition, we give the woman injections, we take her to theater, we use a needle to draw the eggs out of her body, we combine the egg and the sperm together in the lab, put it in an incubator, 
when an embryo is formed, we transfer that embryo back into the woman. So IUI is a lot less invasive, a lot cheaper, and, and IVF is more invasive, but more successful. Okay. The combination of, if, if you compare the two. The husband issue, there are two different things they've said. One, the sperm count is low, low, and usually that doesn't require surgery. And the other one is the sperm shoot in the wrong direction. Um, I'm wondering why she's talking about a retrograde ejaculation, which means you ejaculate, <laughs> instead of ejaculating out, you ejaculate into the bladder. That exists. But there are medical conditions that if you treat, the retrograde ejaculation goes away, well, well, and then now ejaculates forward. So it might not necessarily require surgery. A surgery in all kinds of all kinds of cases. I've got a client like that that once we manage his medical condition, the sperm comes forward. Once he goes off his medication, then he goes backwards. The backwards one is more <coughs> difficult. We are, then you are required to urinate. Then we take the sperm out of it and wash it and clean it and use it. Complex issues. But um, either way, they can be they can be um, 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 addressed. So. Um, but if the sperm count is low, sometimes an IVF is just the most straightforward mm -hmm. thing just to, to, to do about it. All right, great. I hope you, you've got some advice there. Hi, Martin Luther. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? It's been a um, while. Yeah, it has been a long time, but I've been listening to the program. Say again. Okay, okay. How are you? And first of all, good morning and good morning to your choice customers. As I said, Martin Luther from Laponi. Uh, naturally, Oh, Martin Luther, please, please call us back. Good morning. Uh, you never read my messages, oh dear, but it's okay. It's not deliberate. I'm sorry. Please, Doc, what is PID? And does one, and how does one get infected? Can it, or can it just occur on its own? And this is from, okay, I'm unable to pronounce it, Nitya from Adabaka. And PID is pelvic inflammatory disease. Mm -hmm. It occurs as a result of an ascending infection, usually infection that ascends from the vagina into the cervix, into the womb, and then into the tubes, and then into the pelvis. Mm -hmm. And the uh, infection is caused by organisms. And those organisms, once they get into the area, they grow, they cause a discharge, they cause damage to the tubes, they cause scarring, they can cause an abscess in that area, and it comes with pain. Um, um, it's, it's, it can be treated with antibiotics. It's important that we treat it aggressively and early because of the damage to the tubes. Mm. And there are a lot of women who have had PID, taking some small antibiotics and it's gone mm -hmm. away. The pain has gone away, but the damage has continued and the tubes have been damaged for life. And then they go in, later on, they're trying to have a child, they can have a child and we go and do an x-ray and they tell you you've got blocked tubes. Oh dear. The blocked tubes may have, may have resulted from that infection that, that you got, you had, which, was not, properly which was not properly treated. So a PID is a big deal. I used to have a boss who would insist that you have must have antibiotics for one week, IV, mm. in the hospital. Okay. Yeah, because of the damage to the tubes. And um, listening to what you're saying, for the very best intentions. I yes, mean, yes, your, yes, your yes, boss, yes. yeah. Yeah, he insists on it because the damage is, and that is part of the reason why we are, we are like, uh, condoms are important. Because as a sperm, the sperm, the semen is becoming with an infection. Assuming the semen is not coming with an infection, the, sper the infection that is already in your vagina can jump onto the sperm and the sperm will carry it into the Inside. tubes. Inside. Mm. You see. So, hmm. Okay. Eric, hello. Good morning to you. Hello, Eric. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, good morning dog. Great. Yeah. So, um, thanks, uh, Doc, so much. My wife and I have an issue, and um, I want to find out from Doc how he can be of help. Eric, hey, please go ahead. Okay, so he, she has this inf an infection, sort of, let me call it like that, I mean, from a layman's point of view. Um, and when I go there, you know what I mean by that, I also get some dryness on my stick, and then sometimes it's killed. And uh, we've been to hospitals several times. They've done a couple of tests, and they couldn't really lay hands on anything specifically. Her place gets sore, and um, it makes it 
quite itchy for her as well. She has diabetes, I must say. So now they are suspecting that it's being caused by the diabetes and she has to manage that. But I just want to take doctor's idea on it. If need be, we may just visit him in the hospital. Something comes to mind immediately as to what the problem should be. And if that's the case, it should be pretty straightforward. I would, of course, need some additional information, but there's a particular... I think there's something we should be able to do about this condition. Okay. And the fact that she has diabetes even makes it more... Um, we are more convinced. more convinced that it is inclined to be in that direction. And if, if that's the case, you should get a treatment. One week's treatment should make a difference. However, if she's diabetic, she would have recurrences if we don't control the sugar. So maybe we should have a chat. Eric, please leave your number with Daniela. Okay. All right, then. Thanks. Otherwise, we'll announce. Yeah, leave your, leave your number with Daniela. We'll connect okay. you to All right. Her. Thank yeah. you. Um, I am 45. I had my myomectomy in October. I am completely fine now. My concern is my tummy is still big, hard, and sometimes feel bloated. I couldn't exercise immediately after surgery since I was still in pain. I have since resumed my exercises of walking. I was also informed the fibroids could grow again. But what could cause it? So first of all, your tummy is still big. I mean, I don't know who told you that if you remove the fibroids, the bigness of your tummy would, would come down. because. If the fibroid was not the reason why your tummy is big, after you remove the fibroid, your tummy will, will still, still be big. Be big. Uh -huh. It's like those who say they can't have children after a fibroid surgery. And you ask them, did you have children before the fibroid surgery? And they'll say no. They say, why do you think the fibroid is a surgery is the problem? <laughs> um, the tummy being big is something else that necessarily is related to the fibroid. The fact that the fibroid is gone and the tummy is still big means the fibroid is not the cause for the tummy being big. Please do your exercises. Your tummy is going to get smaller over time. Um, you do know that abs are made in the kitchen and not in the theater. So if you reduce <laughs> your, cal <laughs> your calorie consumption and you continue your working and your exercise, the result is that you will lose weight everywhere, including and maybe yeah. especially uh, yeah, your tummy. Your you must also remember that the midsection fat is not only what you see outside. There's fat around the intestines, the visceral fat. That is the one that pushes everything out. Oh. So the weight loss starts from inside before you even see the manifestation um, outside. So. But how about the bloatness? She says the bloating. Yeah, uh, the bloating. Once again, we need more a bit more information. It may not be related to to the surgery mm -hmm. uh, per, per se. Um, um, but you know, for most people, bloating is diet, diet related. Yeah. I, I gave somebody some medication, and the woman told me that she's having bloated tummy and that kind of stuff. But does it contain milk? So I went to check and said, yeah, it contains a bit of lactose. Said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm lactose intolerant. I didn't tell you. So even supplements that we give to people sometimes, sometimes can cause trouble. It can cause this bloated tummy and all kinds of stuff. Um, I have someone on the line. I'll just read this question and come to you. Doc won't answer that question. He, Doc, the question you didn't want to answer, somebody has it. She's 51. She still has her menses, although not regular. She's asking, when will it stop? <laughs> she also <laughs> says she has five. Hello, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Sir. Great. Please let's hear you. Um, Doc, um, my wife, I've been listening to her doctor for some time, I think about six months. And then um, she feels a little weak after, like, when that can start. We went to the hospital and then the doctor said um, she's having some, um, and it's kind of scientific way, so I think that will help. It's multiple peripherally arranged small um follicles. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I understand what that ovaries. is. Go ahead. In both ovaries. And um, when she do this uh, or when I want to go there, I have this funny smell that comes along with it. She drives down easily. And her tummy has become big after. I don't know what I should do or what no, you, 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 you've got what you've described are at least two separate problems. The smell issue is a different issue. The periphery arranged follicles around uh, is one of the diagnostic criteria we use for conditions that have got people who have got PCOS. And if she's got irregular menses, peripheral arranged follicles, and one other thing, most likely she does have polycystic ovaries. She needs to be seen preferably by somebody who specializes in that area and needs to be addressed. PCOS is easy to treat if you know what you are doing. Um, the smell issue too is just give it the right treatment, it should be able to go away. 
not a difficult problem to to address. You need to see somebody who um, is conversant with it, and it, sh it should be solved pretty quickly for you. Okay. Um, I think I will probably come to ask this problem. All right. Oh. Doc, uh, the question. Which one? This one. Ah, that one. She's 51. She's still 51. She's still having her menses. Uh, yes. Um, um, when will it stop? <laughs> ah, when will know. it grind to a halt? But um, I don't know when it started. It may take a year. Let's assume that it has... But she says she's still having her menses. Oh, no, nice. it's irregular. Yes. Oh, it may end within a, 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 a year. A Hopefully year. within a year. Oh, you, you gave an answer. Hopefully within a year. You gave an answer yes, eventually. It, it will stop. <laughs> the fact that she has a fibroid complicates things a little bit, but I think it, it should stop hopefully within a year. Great. So we, we have an answer of some sort to that. Now, this weekend, the battle lines are drawn in the Syria uh, as the league comes to a close. Another episode of the Milan rivalry um, will be revived when AC Milan and Inter Milan go head-to-head -head for the title on Sunday, 22nd May. Can AC Milan finally win the Scudetto after an 11-year drought or will Inter Milan successfully defend their title? Subscribe to Go TV Max for 85 Ghana CDs and catch all the nail-biting moments. Go TV, love it. Hello, Adam. Please, my wife has had... My wife has had about four miscarriages after almost every every six to seven weeks in her pregnancy. Kindly ask Dr. Paddy if we can do something about it. Doc, but you yeah. and I, I have someone on the line, and then we'll take this one as our last. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Yeah. Good morning. How are you? Very well, yes, sir. Great. Please go ahead. Please, uh, I would like to know about this degenerative fibroid and why it's so painful. I mean, what is the is it physiology or whatever behind it? Mm -hmm. And how does it come? We thought that it affects. I don't know. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So a degenerative fibroid is essentially a fibroid that is undergoing certain changes because it's not getting adequate blood supply. Let's put it that way. But why should it? Well, it's good for you because a fibroid that doesn't get blood will die. Mm. Uh, but that rotting process, you no. Know, for lack of a better word, the rotting process, you know, comes with pain. producing of certain kinds of chemicals. And those chemicals cause the pain. Oh. So that's what happens. When the fibroid outgrows its blood supply, or due to pregnancy, uh, the blood supply is diverted to, you know, other, other, other areas, then those uh, processes occur, chemicals are reduced, I released, those chemicals cause the pain, and it's, it's really painful. But if you give you treatment, usually within a week, it gets better. It should be better. Yeah. And our final question. Hello, Adam. My wife has had four miscarriages after almost every six to seven weeks in her pregnancy. Kindly ask doctor if we can do something about it. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Something can be done about it. Um, recently, I had a client who had the same, same stuff. And she missed a period. And we're like, oh, let's put this intervention in place because of her history. And she was doubting it at first. I'm like, no, it's, we are better air on the side of caution. Let's put it eventually in place. Pregnancy has stayed. She's crossed the seven to eight weeks um, border now. She's quite excited. At her last visit, I told her I'll see her in one month. She said, no, she's coming back in one week. So she wants to check on her baby every week. It is possible. There are two main problems that can occur. Um, one of them is very difficult to fix. But for the majority of people, it is the other one, which if you, know, if it's, if you give her the right medication at the right time, problem will be solved. Not a big deal. Great. Thank you very much. Dr. Osafo sent in a very naughty message. I will read it, Doc. But he, he says good morning to my boss, Dr. Fadiaiti. And then he says that using condom is good, but eating toffee with a wrapper on is hard for well, yeah, hey, it, Doc. It is hard, <gasps> but I'm right. sending to you. <laughs> my doctor said, yeah, we'll end on that <laughs> note. But thank you all for doing the listening, <coughs> Doc. Thank you very much for coming again. We still have two topics to treat, so we'll see how we'll, we'll structure them. But... Enjoy the weekend. My name is Adam Knight T. And to the team who works in the background, Daniela, Dennis, everybody, thank you very much. We'll mm -hmm. do this again. Yes, we'll do this again next week. Weekend's the show comes up. And then we will have News File. We will have Sports Link. We will have Show Busy to Z, News Flash, and then Open House Party. So you want to stay with us on Joy 99.7 FM. Enjoy the weekend. Bye. 
Enjoy Prime, the ultimate experience.